Madam President, uh, the representative of the Secretary General, speakers of various parliaments, distinguished colleagues, all protocols observed. The President of this great union, executive members, I crave your indulgence to remind us of the immense power that lies within our collective voice. We stand at a pivotal moment in history, an intersection where the voices and the choices we make will shape the future of the world in constant crisis. I come before you not just as a representative of the country called Nigeria, but as a global citizen, deeply invested in the brotherhood of mankind and in the interconnectedness of the entire world. It is with shared vision and sense of purpose that I speak to you today and give you the requisite update on parliamentary activities in Nigeria. Nigeria is a nation brimming with stunning kaleidoscopic diversity and a vibrantly rich cultural heritage with over 200 million people speaking over 500, 500 languages. Nigeria is a tapestry of different religions, but predominantly Islam and Christianity. We have different cultures and different ethnic groups. Unfortunately, this diversity does not shield us from the challenges of ethnic and religious conflicts that continue to plague our land. This situation also leads to the tragedy of commons, a situation where persons acting in their self or ethnic interest deplete or degrade a shared resource leading to its overall decline of destructions, spirited efforts to checkmate this situation and strengthen the peace and unity of our dear country have been embarked upon by the current administration. The spectre of polarization in the parliaments around the world. It is within this context that the role of the parliament becomes pivotal to ensure peace, foster unity, mediate disputes, and provide solutions. It is often said that the judiciary it's the last hope of the common man, but the parliament remains the first hope of the common man. Why? Because except the parliament makes the right laws and creates the enabling legal environment for peace and justice, the judiciary can neither dispense justice nor peace. The parliament must therefore remain the melting pot of every country's unity and peace. The parliament must hold a significant responsibility in curbing polarization and ensuring peace and progress through legislation. We, we have done that a lot in Nigeria, but one remarkable legislative milestone that I would like to share with you is the Not Too Young to Run Bill, which was passed in 2018. This landmark legislation amended sections of the Constitution, lowering the age qualification for, for various offices in the country, thereby giving opportunities to young people and women, providing a level playing ground for the youth to compete in all legislative offices and be part of nation building. In the, the confirmation process of political appointees before the parliament, we ensure that nominees are evaluated based on merit and constitutional adherence rather than political party affiliations, gender, religion, race, or ethnicity. Committees such as disabilities, federal character, human rights, poverty alleviation, constituency outreach and corporate social responsibilities. Women in parliament, women affairs and social development and youth development play crucial roles in curbing polarization and gender biases. We try our best to ensure that through legislation, we reduce the incidences of tribalism, addressing issues of development. And then we try to ensure that we provide a level playing field for peace to reign in our country. Furthermore, through parliamentary approval, Nigeria has been actively contributing to international peace and security by deploying troops and resources for peacekeeping missions across Africa and beyond. Our armed forces have played very vital roles in peacekeeping efforts from Sierra Leone to Liberia to conflicts like the India-Pakistan dispute of 1956 and Tanzania in 1964, not to mention the World War II, we saw a lot of people, including my late father, taking part to bring peace to the world. As parliamentarians, bilateral relations, parliamentary friendship groups, 
have the potential to strengthen ties between parliaments of different countries, facilitating the exchange of knowledge and promoting gender mainstreaming, democracy, and good governance. The Nigerian Parliament, through the Committee on Treaties, Protocols, and Agreements, ensure that international commitments are observed and ratified into law. Pre preventive democracy is a powerful instrument for conflict prevention. I must say that in conclusion, the achievements of the Nigerian Parliament in upholding international commitments, holding the government accountable, and promoting peace building deserves commendation and meets IPU expectations. However, we look forward to further progress in parliamentary pro pro democracy. In ending this address, let us advert our minds to Martin Luther King's Jr.'s admonition, which says that all mankind is tied together, all life is interrelated, and we are all caught up in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of identity. Whatever affects our, us directly, affects us indirectly. That is why we are here. We cannot walk alone. We must walk together. We must work together in order to ensure, hand in hand, that we create a brighter and a more equitable future for mankind. Thank you for listening to me.